Hello and welcome to this video about a topic in linear algebra. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady. The topic for today is the so-called Jordan normal form. This one is such an important problem that I will do a couple of videos about it. This one is now part one, where I want to talk a little bit about the concept of the Jordan normal form. Now I should immediately mention that the name comes from a French mathematician called Camille Jordan. However, since most people use the English pronunciation, I will also do this for these videos. Okay, so let's start with something you should already know. Now let A be a square matrix with real or complex numbers as entries. Then we call A diagonalizable if there is an invertible matrix X of the same size such that this matrix transforms the matrix A into a diagonal matrix. More concretely this means X inverse A X equals a diagonal matrix D. Or equivalently we can say that we can decompose the matrix A into three matrices X then D and then X inverse. Therefore, this is what we call a matrix decomposition and it might be helpful for a lot of calculations. For example, if you want to calculate powers of the matrix A, you can just use this decomposition and essentially you just need the powers of the diagonal matrix D, which is very easy because you just have the entries on the diagonal where you calculate the powers of these numbers. However, this only works in the special case where the matrix A is diagonalizable. Therefore, the natural question would be how can we generalize that for all square matrices? And we will find out that the correct substitution in the general case would be to choose here a Jordan normal form. Now I can already tell you that in our context such a Jordan normal form always exists. Which means if I choose a square matrix with complex valued entries, then we have always a Jordan normal form. Two important things I should point out here. First, I speak of a Jordan normal form, which means J is not uniquely given in general. There could be several Jordan normal forms which should be similar in some sense. Secondly, the complex numbers on the left also include the real numbers, so we could have a matrix A which only has real numbers as entries. However, this does not necessarily mean that also J has only real numbers as entries. Here we maybe really need the complex numbers. Okay, if we have a Jordan normal form, it also means we have an invertible matrix X as before, such that we have the matrix decomposition. Please also note, if A is diagonalizable, this Jordan normal form has to be the diagonal matrix from before. So we have indeed a generalization. J could be a diagonal matrix, but in general it is not. Okay, let's look at an example. I want to choose a matrix which is large enough, such that we can talk about all possible cases that can happen. So I choose a matrix which is 9 times 9. And now I assume that we already know the eigenvalues of A. I want 2, 3 and 4 as eigenvalues and I also want to know the algebraic multiplicities and we choose the algebraic multiplicity of 2 as 3 and 4 for 3 and 2 for 4. So please remember the algebraic multiplicity is by definition how often one finds the eigenvalue as a zero in the characteristic polynomial. Hence if we add up all the algebraic multiplicities we have to get out 9 again. Therefore we know such a case can happen and now we can think about different possibilities. If the matrix A was diagonalizable we would find as a Jordan normal form 
just a diagonal matrix where we find these eigenvalues on the diagonal. Of course, there are different possibilities for the order of these eigenvalues, but we know how often they should occur, exactly with the algebraic multiplicities. However, what we really want for the Jordan normal form is to group the same eigenvalues. In addition, as an option, you could say, I also want that the eigenvalues increase. And then indeed, the order is fixed. Putting the eigenvalues into these groups is what we usually call Jordan blocks. This means that we have exactly three Jordan blocks here. For each distinct eigenvalue, we have exactly one Jordan block. Hence, the first thing you should remember is that the algebraic multiplicity gives you the size of the corresponding Jordan block. So you see, this is the first step in the Jordan normal form. We have such Jordan blocks on the diagonal. Of course, the interesting thing is now what happens inside such a Jordan block. But I can already tell you, they are independent, so it does not matter with which one you start your calculations. Okay, then let's start discussing the red one. Since we didn't fix the matrix A, I just gave you the eigenvalues and the algebraic multiplicities, we can't do any calculations. But we can look which different possibilities could happen. To be more precise, we have these Jordan blocks and the size, but we don't know what is up here inside the block. But we know there are only a few possibilities. The first case I already mentioned, we could have a diagonalizable matrix A, which means for this block here, we have zeros outside of the diagonal with twos. We usually emphasize that by drawing a new box here, where all the non-zero numbers are. So we have one box here, we have one small box here, and one here. And these are now called Jordan boxes inside the big Jordan block. Now we already know where this comes from, because besides of the algebraic multiplicity, we also have the geometric multiplicity. And because we are here in the diagonalizable case, we know the geometric multiplicity has to be the same as the algebraic multiplicity. So here, 3. And this 3 corresponds to the 3 Jordan boxes inside the block. Hence, you might have already have guessed that we find different cases for different geometric multiplicities. So the next case would be geometric multiplicity of 2, which already means that we just have two Jordan boxes. Please note, from the geometric multiplicity, we only know the number of the boxes, not the size. But here we don't have any choice. We know we can have one box of size two and one of size one. Of course, we could change the order of the boxes, but this would be essentially the same. So normally we would ignore the order. Most importantly here to remember is that in a Jordan box, above the diagonal, you always find ones. So here would be one, one. Okay, and the last case here is of course just having one Jordan box. So geometric multiplicity of one means one box fills out the whole Jordan block. This also means that we have the ones above the diagonal, so a one here and here the other one. And now these are all the three possibilities we have for our 3 times 3 Jordan block. Here the geometric multiplicity tells us in which case we are. However, this will change now if we look at a 4 times 4 Jordan block. Okay, then let's copy the light blue one here. And then of course the first case would be to have four small Jordan boxes. As before, this corresponds to the geometric multiplicity of four, and then we don't have any other choice than to choose the smallest Jordan box here, which means one times one, and then we can have four of them. A similar thing happens now if we look at the geometric multiplicity of three, so we have three boxes. Here you see if we want three boxes, we need one two times two box and two one times one boxes. 
As before, if we are not interested in the order of the boxes, this one is the only possibility for a geometric multiplicity of 3. Okay, and of course we don't forget the 1 here. Now in the next case, so geometric multiplicity of 2, we have indeed two different possibilities. Maybe that's not so surprising, because if you want to choose two Jordan boxes, you can immediately see that you can choose two big ones, so this one and this one, or you choose a very large one, so a 3 times 3 box, and a small one. They are indeed different now, because the sizes don't coincide. Now, this is very important to note. In this case, it's not sufficient to know just the algebraic and the geometric multiplicity to conclude how the Jordan block has to look. It was sufficient in the case above, because the block was very small. Here the block is bigger, but it's still sufficient to know the geometric and algebraic multiplicity here and here, but not here anymore. And that's important, because you have to know where you need more calculations than just the multiplicities. Okay, so you have seen an example here. And of course, for the sake of completeness, I give you here the last possibility, when the geometric multiplicity is just one. However, this always means the same. We just have one box, so the box fills out the whole Jordan block. Well, maybe that's good enough for an introduction, how the Jordan normal form looks like. For the end of this video, I want to give you a short recipe how to calculate the Jordan normal form for a given matrix. And in the next video, I will do this then in all detail with a good example. Okay, so the first step here you already know. You have to calculate all the eigenvalues. So maybe we call them just lambda with index 1, 2 and so on. And we say they are all different and we have k of them. I've already told you the Jordan blocks, which means the eigenvalues are independent, so you can start with any of them. However, in the end you have to do it for all of them, so the next steps you do for all eigenvalues separately. This step you might have already done. You look how often occurs lambda i as a zero in the characteristic polynomial. And then you calculate the geometric multiplicity of lambda i. And this one is nothing more than calculating the kernel of the matrix minus lambda i times the identity matrix, where I use this one here. And then we look at the dimension. The dimension of the eigenspace, which is this kernel, is exactly the geometric multiplicity. Now from the discussion above, you know you might be already finished here, because in some cases the Jordan block is determined just by the algebraic and geometric multiplicity. If not, we need the next step where you calculate the next powers of A minus lambda i identity matrix. So first you would square the matrix, then look at the kernel and then calculate the dimension of this one. There you get more information and indeed, in general, you have to calculate all these powers until this dimension does not change anymore. If you have never seen that before, it might look complicated, but in the next video we'll see it is not. For the end, I should also mention that we just talked about the Jordan normal form J, but not about the matrix X. Again, remember, we wanted this matrix decomposition. Now, if we also want to calculate this matrix X, which is invertible, we have to do a little bit more than just this recipe here. This is what I also show you in another video, and I will also show you there an example so that you get a feeling how to calculate everything. Okay, so that's good enough for today. So thanks for listening, and see you next time. Bye!